Hi everyone, uh, the other video I was trying to make, I don't know what happened, it didn't work out too well, so I'll start off here with Google Earth and showing you on the map where I'm talking about. This dates back to 10,000 BC, uh, Tyne's Fort, um, it was very big in its day. And then when I was looking around, I haven't really looked up what's, I've seen a few, and there are very beautiful ones, but I found a few just very close within a stone's throw, one here in the ocean. So I will do another video and look into the names of all these forts. Another one here. Flip it around. Down here. I'm trying to get the dates to go back further on the thing, but it won't. There's one here. And then the other one is just directly below it, above it, sorry. Oh. So here it is here, and it's quite big. I'd say it would have started down here, perhaps by the look of that, and probably the outline, like something there, if you look here. So I dare say that that one would have been connected and it would have been a whole coastal sort of defense of the two there. So I will do another video and find out the names of these. So I just wanted to show you quickly. Imagine going up and down those steps, these steps here. And it might be just Google making um, it look bigger, but um, yeah, they look pretty steep. Where were the steps that I saw? Yeah, all along. So, this is the one I'm looking at. And it goes back to 10,000 BC. So we got, was it Tyrans? Um, it's a Mycenaean archaeological site in the Argalus in the Peloponnese, and the location from which the mythical hero Hercules performed his 12 labours. Um, Tyrans was a hill fort with occupation ranging back 7,000 years from the the beginning before the beginning of the Bronze Age, it reached its height between 1400 and 1200 BC. But it was one of the most important centers in the Mycenaean world, and in particular Argos. Its most notable features were its palace, its cyclope and tunnels like the Cyclops, like the giant Cyclops, and especially its walls, which gave it its Homeric, epithetic, and mighty called Tyrans. Tyrans is linked with the myths surrounding Hercules, as the city was the residence of a hero during his labours and some sources even cited as his city of birthplace. What's it done? Okay, sorry, I've got a touch screen. I was using the touch screen and instead of the mouse. Um, so it had a large reception hall, the main room, which had a throne palace against the right wall, an essential hearth bordered by four minion styled wall columns. Minonian? That served as supports of the roof. Two, or three, two of the three walls of the Megaron were incorporated into the architectural of Hera. The goddess of women. The site went into decline at the end of the Mycenaean period and was completely deserted by the Perusians, 
is that in the 2nd century AD, the site was evacuated by Henrik Schleidner in 1884-1885 and is the subject of ongoing evacuations by the German Archaeological Institute at Athens and the University of Hildenburg. In 1300 BC, the citadel and lower town had a population of 10,000 people covering 20, 25 hectares. Despite the destruction of the palace in 1200 BC, the city population continued to increase. By 1150 BC, it had a population of 15,000. Recognised as World Heritage Site in 1999. So, yeah, the citadel. So, this is how it was. It was first referenced by Homer, who praised its massive walls. Ancient tradition held that the walls were built by Cyclops because of only giant superhuman strength could have lifted the enormous stones. After viewing the walls of the ruined citadel in the 2nd century AD, the geographer, the geographer Horatius wrote that two mules pulling together could not, move, could not move even the smallest stones. So, you know, in the 2nd century AD, they're saying that the, the two mules together couldn't even move the smallest stones. Tradition also associates the walls with Proteus, um, the sibling of, I can't say this, name, sorry, Arcus, and the king of Argos. According to the legend, Proteus, pursued by his brother, fled to Lycaria, like, 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 with the help of the Lycosyrians. He managed to return to Argos. There, Proteus occupied the Tyrants and fortified it with the assistance of the Cyclops. Thus, the Greek legend links the three Argolic centers with the three mythical heroes. Creus, the founder of the Doric county of Argos, his brother Proteus, the founder of Tyrans, and his grandson Perseus. So we all know the story of Perseus. He was the one that cut off Medusa's head, the founder of Mycenae. But the tradition was born at the beginning of the historical period when Argos was fighting to become the hegemonic power in the area and needed a glorious past to compete with the other two cities. Okay, so they make up a story to hide the truth. The area has been habit inhabited since prehistoric times. The left of Neolithic settlement was followed in the middle of the 3rd millennium BC by a flourishing early pre-Hellenic settlement located about 15 kilometres southeast of Mycenae on a hill 300 metres long, 45 to 100 metres wide and no more than 80 metres high. From this period, survived over the yard of the Mycenaean period, an imposing circular structure 28 metres in diameter, which appears to be a fortified place of refuge for the city's inhabitants in the time of war and all residents of the king. This base was powerful and was constructed from two concentric, concentric stone walls, among which there were two others cross cutting, so the thickness reached 45 metres. Whoa! Who <laughs> humans? The superstructure was clay and the roof was made of from fire baked tiles. The first Greek inhibitors, the creators of the Middle Hellenic civilization, and the Mycenaean civilization after that, settled the Tyrants at the beginning of the Middle Period, 2000 1600 BC, through the city underwent the, the city underwent its greatest growth during the Mycenaean period. The Acropolis was constructed in the third three phases. The first, at the end of the late Hell period, two period, 1500 to 1400 BC. The second, in the late Hell period, uh, third, 1400 to 1300 BC. And the third, at the end of the late Hell III B, 1300 to 1200 BC. The surviving ruins of the Mycenaean citadel date to the end of the third period. The city's proper surrounded. The city proper surrounded the Acropolis in the plain below, on the plain below. The disaster that struck the Mycenaean centres at the end of the Bronze Age affected Tyrans, but it is certain that the area of the palace place was inhibited continuously until the middle of the 8th century BC. A little later, a temple was built in the ruins of the palace. At the beginning of the Classical period, Tyrans, like Mycenae, became a relatively significant city. 
When Cleomanes of Sparta defeated, defeated Argives, their slaves occupied tyrants for many years, according to the hero, Herodotus. Herodotus also mentions that tyrants took part in the Battle of Palladia in 480 BC with 400 Hopolites. Hopol even in decline, Mycenae and Tyrans were disturbingly to the Argives, who in their political propaganda wanted to monopolize the glory of legendary and mythical ancestors. So they were legendary, but we've got to add mythical into it so that people don't believe the truth. In 486 BC, Argos completely destroyed both Mycenae and Tyrans, and according to the Perusians, transferred the residents to Argos to increase the population of the city. However, Strabo says that many of the Tyrathians moved to the founding, moved to find the city of Helles, modern Porto Heli. Despite its importance, the value was given to Tyrants and its mythical rulers and traditions by the epics and drama. The Parisians dedicated a short piece to Tyrants and newer travellers, travelling to Greece in search of the places where the heroes of the ancient texts lived, did not understand the significance of the cities. Um, it was first evacuated by the German scholar Frederick Thyrsen in 1831. In 1876, Henry considered the Palace of Tyrants to be medieval, so he came very close to drawing the remains to evacuate deeper to the Mycenaean treasures. However, the next period of evacuation was under William Dortfield, the director of the German Archaeological Institute. This time, the ruins were estimated properly. The evacuations were repeated later by Dortfield, with the completion of other German archaeologists who continued his work until 1938 after World War II. 1939 45, the work was continued by the Institute and the Greek Archaeological Service. The archaeological site. The walls extended to the entire area to the top of the hill. Their bases survived throughout all of their length, in their height in some places reaching 7 metres, shortly below the original height, which is estimated at 9 to 10 metres. The walls are quite thick, usually 6 metres and up to 70 metres at points where the tunnels pass through. A strong traverse wall separates the Acropolis in two sections. The self includes the power of parallel buildings, while the northern protects the top of the hill area. In the second section, which dates to the end of the Mycenae area, small gates and many tunnels occasionally open, covered with large triangular roof, which serves as a refuge for the inhabitants of the lower city in times of danger. The entrance of the citadel was always on the east side, but had a different position and form in each of the three construction phases. In the second phase, the gate had the form of the Lion Gate of Mycenae. I'll show you a photo shortly. They're quite huge. Left there was a tower, and to the right was the arm of the wall, so the gate was well protected since the attackers were forced to cross a very narrow cor corridor, while the defences could hit them from above on both sides. In the third phase, the gate was moved further out, the palace of the king, inside the citadel, smaller than to that of Mycenaean dimensions, 11 by 8 and 9 by 8 metres, consist of three areas. The outer port, port, portico with two columns, the Protometus, anteroom, and the Domus main room. The cylinder of fireplace that's surrounded by four wooden columns. The lateral compartments of the palace seem to have a second floor. The decorations on the wall of the outer arch were rich. They had a zone at the bottom of the albus, the slabs with relief, rosettes, and flowers. The rest was decorated with frescoes. Three doors lead to the Promodos and then another to the Dominoes. The middle of the eastern wall is visible in the floor, the place that corresponded to the royal throne. The floor was richly decorated with different themes in the area around the walls and space between the columns of the fireplace. Of course, here the walls were decorated with paintings. I still don't get why would you put um, decorations in the fireplace. Or paintings around a mantle. In the ruins of the mansion which burned during the 8th century BC, a Doric temple was built during the geometric period. Smaller than the mansion, it consisted of two parts, the Spermodius and the cellar. The width of the temple was just greater than half of the mansion. 
Well, the back wall of the temple reached the height of the rear columns of the fireplace. Three springs fed into the compound, one on the western side of the large courtyard, which could, easy, could be accessed by secret entrance, and the two at the end of the north side of the wall, accessed by tunnels into the wall. These are similar such structures found in other shelters are witnesses to the care which was taken here, as in other Mycenae and Apopolis, to the basic problem of water access in time of siege. So I just thought you guys might find this interesting. So this is some of the decorations. Tunnels like the way that's built is unreal. So yeah, here we have the original. So this is the Cyclops War, I think they were talking about. Yeah, Cyclops. So I will do um, more into Greece. Um, the reason I come across this is I'm currently reading a book and it led me to another book written by the same author. So the one I'm currently reading at the moment is Ancient Times written by um, his last name is Breasted. James Henry Breasted, um, and this led me to, so like, we've, we've got a Persian temple right here, just opening it in the first book. It goes on about the um, Phoenicians, the Venetians, and all of the um, fantasy heroes, the, the battles, some of the names, Nebuchadnezzar in the Bible are mentioned. So it's a really interesting book, but it led me to a different book, which is the one that brought all of this up. So, Outlines of European History, written by the same fella. So I'll leave links in the description. Um, this came out, I think, this 1916 was the first one, and then 1935. So there's two of them. Copyrighted was by James, uh, by Charles Breasted in 1944, and then the other ones were by James Breasted. So he must have had a brother or something helping. So that's that one. And this is the name of the other book he wrote. So just try to see if I can get Yeah. So um. The photos I sh showed on the other video come from this, this one here. Okay, thank you. Thank you for watching and to all my new subscribers. Thank you. Welcome um, to my friends. Thank you for supporting me. Um, I just haven't been well the last two weeks. So just, my body is just tired. So prayers would be greatly accepted. <laughs> Anyway, you have a great day, great night, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for watching. Hit the like. Subscribe if you want. Bye.